Welcome everyone to WVVH-TV's coverage of the Armory Show here at Pier 92 and 94 in Manhattan. And I'm with Giovanni Garcia. Giovanni, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Hi, welcome to the fair. And thank you for welcoming us. This is our first time. This is celebrating your 12th year here at the, uh, the Armory Show. But this has become a premier art event. In fact, many people call it the greatest art event for the United States for contemporary art. And uh, you guys have been doing a tremendous job in making this possible. For our viewers, could you give us a little bit of an insight as to what the Armory Show is all about? Well, the Armory Show started as, it was organized by four dealers. There were four young dealers, and it was in 1994. They started as um, the Gramercy Park International, and they just wanted to get together. They wanted to do something that would, like, bring attention to the art world. And um, to much to their surprise, it actually, like, became a success immediately. The first fair was held at a hotel. But within four years, um, the fair had gotten way too large. We then moved to actually the Park Avenue Armory, where the original Armory show from 1913 was held. And um, even that became too small because we got successful so quickly. So we moved to the piers. And this year is actually the largest we've ever had. The first year that we ever did the Armory show, we had 74 dealers. Um, this year, we have 289 from around the world. 289 celebrating your 12th year. How many individual artists would you say? Um, it's always really hard to gauge a number, but we think around 2,000 artists are going to be represented in the fair. Now, there's a selection process for they're all <laughs> they're all living artists. Number one, right? Actually, no. Um, Pier 94 is all living artists, um, and there's 209 galleries. Um, that are just specializing in contemporary art. So that's the living artist side. And Pier 92, where we're standing right now, it's our new modern section. We actually introduced it last year. And so that's art of the 20th century. So if you walk around here, you're going to find Picasso, de Kooning, Miro, you know, like all the modern masters. So we're looking at artists and art from the 20th and 21st century. That's correct. Now, you're, this has become a, an international art show. A little bit of an idea of how many uh, percentage of your um, exhibitors and artists are from outside of the country. You know, I should actually know the answer. I know that me. number. It's 40 percent, I think. Oh, there you go. Say. See, you're, you're doing a better <laughs> job than I am. I will tell you that we have um, uh, exhibitors from 31 different countries in the fair this year. So for our viewers who uh, are interested in art, who love art, uh, if we can give them an idea of what uh, what awaits them here at the Armory Show and what, your, what are your hours this weekend? Um, we start tomorrow, um, Thursday, at noon, and um, we're open from noon to 8, except Sunday we're open from noon to 7. And when they come here, they're going to see basically a history of you know, art from beginning in the 1900s all the way to the very present. There's a lot of work that's being shown on Pier 94 that's never been shown anywhere that's coming straight from the artist's studio. And with so many galleries, I really don't think that you could find some uh, any other venue that would give you an overview of what's going on in the art world as much as our fair does. Giovanni, your organization works with a number of the major museums here in New York to help promote art. Could we talk a little bit about that? Sure. We've had a long-standing relationship with the Museum of Modern Art, stemming back to 2001, and they have a benefit party celebrating our opening um, the day of our preview on Wednesdays. Um, they have a concert at the museum, so you actually have the opportunity to go dance at the Museum of Modern Art, which is a very unique opportunity. But we also have really close relationship with a lot of the other institutions in, in the city. Um, we have relationship with the Studio Museum in Harlem, with the New Museum, with the Whitney, the Guggenheim. We really try to embrace the whole city. Um, we also have started something called Armory Arts Week, and that is an opportunity to, um, to let people throughout the boroughs um, promote their scene. So there's events happening in Brooklyn, there's events happening in the Bronx, there's events happening in Queens, and um, so the entire week is just devoted to art throughout the city. The Armory Show is here in town if you're a collector a student, a lover of art, we invite you to be part of this event. Your website? www.thearmoryshow.com Thank you, Giovanni. Our viewers are in for a treat because you, you and your staff are going to provide us with an inside look as to what the Armory Show is all about. Take a look at this show and then come down to the Armory Show. Thank you. Thank you for coming.
we're here at the Armory Art Show, and what better way to, to see the Armory Art Show than to have the, the pleasure of having these two beautiful women show us the art show. You're part of this org organization. I'm with Deborah Harris and Margaret Irby. Deborah, what's your title here at the uh, Armory Show? I'm the managing director of the Armory Show Modern, which is the modern section of the fair, including um, 76 galleries that exhibit historically important work from the early 20th century through about the 1990s. And Margaret? Yes, I'm head of the Docent program. We have about 15 art professionals that are taking various VIP and museum groups around to the fair. This show has become huge. I mean, for, for this is uh, our TV station's first time here, but you guys have been around for 12 years, and this has become the premier contemporary art fair in the United States. That's an awesome responsibility. Absolutely. And last year we included the modern section, so it became even bigger. Um, this year we're, we have a whole week filled with events. And the week actually is called the Armory Arts Week. So many institutions, museums, several other satellite fairs are going on at the same time. Last year we had almost 50,000 visitors here to the fair. We're expecting over 50, 60,000 this year. So. We're quite excited, and people have been in New York since last week anticipating this event. The people who come to visit this event, to be part of this event, if we could talk a little bit of, about that. Well, we have collectors. We have a really extensive VIP program in which we invite collectors from all over the world to come to New York for the week. And we have a program of events, including um, tours to insider tours to museums, private tours of collections, foundations, and we have over 8,000 VIPs um, from all around the world, including Asia, even Africa, really South is America, it's yes. international. We have uh, many, many groups that we're bringing around, are European collectors, collectors from Berlin, um, from Asia, from India, a uh, truly international group, and it ranges from serious art collectors to students and lovers of the art so it's a really wide audience well you mentioned VIPs our our viewers are in for a treat because you're giving us that inside look. Yes, today is the actually the preview day. Tomorrow it will open to the public and we'll run from Thursday through Sunday noon to 8 p.m. and then on Sunday noon to 7 p.m. Okay, are you both ready? Let's start ready? looking. Ready to go. Some art. Ernie, as we walk around Pier 92, the modern uh, pier of the show, this is a great example of an international gallery here from Italy with a museum quality show. We have uh, Morandi's uh, paintings here, and actually Charlotte Wickham, who's one of our great docents, uh, might just say a few words about this museum quality exhibition. Well, thank you, Charlotte. I, I've been hearing a lot about the Morandi's. And it's a must-see if you come to the show. Absolutely. Could, could you tell us what, what it is? Well, it's like a museum quality show within, you know, a commercial space. It's fantastic. It's rarely, you rarely see all these Mirandis in one space. And some of them, actually, you may have never seen at all. The landscapes are very rare. I think there are only three or four of those, and they have one of them here. Um, Mirandi painted, he lived such an artist's life. He lived with his mother and his sister, and um, he never left the house. He just painted and went to church. So he lived this very sort of religious, zen-like life, but he was very shy, and you see that sense of nervousness in his work, but they're very calm and lovely and rare, actually. And we're looking at one of uh, Morandi's work you call the bottles, but... Yes, he painted the same bottles over and over and over and um, just moved them around. There is one here of a seashell that I think is the only one he did of a seashell. He didn't do that one over and over as he did the bottles. And he obviously is an artist who, uh, he's deceased? Is... He's deceased, but this gallery, how do you pronounce... them in their life. It's a Arte he majority. Actually, he was with this gallery when he was alive, and they continue to carry his work, which is very special. And he's one of those artists whose name will be, uh, will be up there with the, uh, being collected by the major Yes, museums. absolutely. It's museum quality just, work. The Metropolitan Museum just had a major show of his work. But he was relatively unknown for a very long time. So it's, it's sort of a resurgence 
um, of a work that people didn't know about that much then. He's sort of an artist artist. Ernie, we're looking at another work of Mirandi. This is probably the most expensive one in the show of all the Mirandis that are here. It was painted in 1958, so it was painted later in his life. I love the little purple bottle. You don't always see that one. And then how he's turned the bottle in the middle to the side. Usually they're very frontal. So that's nice that he has something that's a square and turned at an angle. This is a Mirandi landscape. They're very rare. You see very few of them. He was a tonalist, total value painter. He keeps the colors very close. That's super difficult to do. He was so sensitive to color. He wanted to get to the purest form of what he was painting. We're with representatives of the uh, gallery d'arte maggiore. maggiore from and Bologna. From Bologna. Welcome yeah. to New York. Welcome thank to the you. Armory Show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been hearing so much of uh, Morandi. Yes. Yeah. And he is a grand artist, a great artist. He's a great artist in Italy. In it no, in the world. Yeah, in Italy. <laughs> but uh, Morandi, we work with Morandi. Sono tantissimi anni. Okay, from many, many, many years. Many, many yeah. years. I'll, I'll translate for Noi our viewers. Siamo, grazie, <laughs> grazie. E siamo dei veri specialisti per Morandi e abbiamo collaborato. You're the specialists, the, the experts for Morandi. For when Morandi. did Morandi die? What year? 1964. So 64? 64. 64. Yeah. 64. Yeah. E, e la mostra che c'è stata al Metropolitan di New York. Oh, he's at the Metropolitan. Noi abbiamo anche collaborato. Oh, excellent. Yes. excellent. E, e anche alla mostra che è stata fatta a Parigi al Museo d'Arte Moderna, and sempre also, su Morandi. And also with Amazing. the Museum and I... of Modern Art of Paris oh. for the exhibition of Perché Morandi. 35 anni che lavoriamo su 35 Morandi. 35 years you've been yes. working with Morandi. So this is an example of what the Armory Show sì. for our viewers here in New York is about bringing international galleries, yes. international artists. Yes. The name Morandi, if you don't know it now, you'll know he'll be up there with the, the masters because he is being collected. So we, we thank you so very much. Thank You're going to you. be here through Sunday. Si. Okay. But do you have a website if our viewers want to reach the gallery? Yeah, www <laughs> maggiore m a double g i o r e g a m dot com. We're here in the gallery Fowersco booth with Gens Fowersco, the director, and um, Fowersco Gallery is located and it started in Copenhagen, Denmark. They now have a gallery in Beijing, China. And he's brought a group of very interesting works, including an amazing Rauschenberg painting. And I'm going to let him talk a little bit about it. Yeah, this painting by Robert Rauschenberg, he made for his own 72nd year's birthday uh, as a present to himself. It's his own x-ray uh, you have uh, in, the, in the center of the painting. Uh, which he used first time in 1967, also 30 years before, in his uh, uh, most well-known print called The Booster. And he then put around his own self-portrait uh, all the things he had good memories about. And to me this is one of the strongest painting Rosenberg ever made. It's visually just amazing and it's a compilation of so many of the works that he's done throughout his life it's really a seminal, seminal work for him and it's representative of what this uh, armory show is about exactly. isn't it exactly because really we we span you know a, a long period of history and many of the artists are so um, influenced by the other artists so you get a chance to actually go downstairs and see the contemporary works and come upstairs and see the people who really have inspired so many of those younger artists. Um, we have another really interesting piece I just wanted to talk about too on the floor here. So I'm going to let Gens talk about it. It's, it's, very, it's the most important Chinese artist in the world right now. His name is Ai Weiwei. And the juxtaposition of the Rauschenberg and the Ai Weiwei is just incredible. And I'm going to just let him talk a little bit about this piece. Yeah, I, I first of all think that both Rosenberg and Ai Weiwei were very much inspired by Dujian, both of them. And this piece on the floor is 
called half a ton of sunflower seeds. And it's uh, sunflower seeds made of porcelain. Uh, each is one gram, so there's 500,000 pieces, and they are all hand-painted. And it, it, uh, I just think it's beautiful and it's amazing, and it's a th piece you can only make in China today uh, because it takes a lot of labor. And the artist's name again, please? His name is Ai Weiwei, and he was actually the architect of one of the most important buildings at the Olympics in Beijing this summer. We also have a uh, gallery in Beijing. Yeah, we have a gallery in Beijing where we uh, mostly introduce Western art. Right now we have a show with Tony Ausler, kind of a retrospective show. and. Actually, our opening show was with Robert Rosenberg. Uh, he gave us that t show in 2007, which we were very happy about. And, uh, and then one of the few Chinese artists we have shown there is Ai Weiwei. And now we're looking at another very important historical work in the fair. Uh, this is a piece by Edvard Munch. And in fact, it relates to a more contemporary piece over my shoulder on the other wall by George Bozelitz, which is called Edvard. And I'm going to let Gens talk a little bit about these two pieces. If we start with uh, Edvard by Bozelitz, uh, this Bozelitz is the most, the artist who have had most influence on Bozelitz is uh, Edvard Munch. Uh, and uh, he have made quite a few paintings uh, directly relating to Edvard Munch, but this one is probably the most specific one because it's a self-portrait of Edvard Munch, uh, which Baslitz have uh, reworked, and uh, yeah. And the it's a huge painting, also the size uh, and the. It's it's a marvelous piece. And this uh, traditional. Uh, uh, piece from uh, the, yeah, this is a, a painting from 1895. Uh, it's a, a, a landscape uh, at Askotstrand in, in Norway, and I think what is interesting here is that the, there's no people in. Normally, you see people, or often you see people in in monks paintings, but here again, you have all the melancholy you know from Edvard Munch in this beautiful landscape, and it's just a master. The painter. Hey Ernie, now that we've been around to Italy and China and Copenhagen, we're back in New York at the Allen Stone Gallery and we have Claudia Stone here. She's brought many uh, jewels, small works on paper by de Kooning among other things, including uh, a work on paper and a sculpture by John Chamberlain, which she will talk to you about. Hi, this is um, actually an unusual example of a collage by John Chamberlain. Most people are very familiar with his works in metal and the, the three-dimensional sculptures. He also did a series of works, if you look closely, it's actually on an old uh, ceiling tile, the old pop-up ceilings, but there's an immediacy to the placement of the work and the arrangement and working with paper and staples, which you get here the way a lot of artists, if you looked at Franz Klein's work, the works on ink are sort of an immediate gesture, it's the original impulse, and then he would go to the canvas, and a lot of these collages in a way show an immediate impulse in the, the hand of the artist sort of working an idea this out. This is unusual for Chamberlain. We're, well, we're all aware of his use of metal. People are very aware of his use of metal, and they're not as aware of his uh, collages, works on paper. And there are a number of wall reliefs that he's done in metal, but also there are earlier works that also include paper and metal fragments. So he's sort of working his way into the larger metal pieces. But it's an easier way to work out an idea with a piece of paper and a staple gun than with a big piece of sheet metal and or a fender. Claudia, you're with the Allen Stone I'm with Gallery. the Allen Stone Gallery. And being here at uh, the Armory Show, tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's actually our first experience at the Armory Show, and it's been terrific. It's uh, unusual to have this, the crowd storming in the minute the fair opens, and it's been nonstop, and people have been very enthusiastic and receptive and interested. So, so far, so good. And what sets you guys apart is small works, but also... Well, in this fair, we brought a small collection of abstract expressionist works, uh, including... Well, this Willem is a neighbor of ours from the Hamptons. There you Willem go. So we have, we have some small works of Willem de Kooning's on paper, some works from the 50s and the 60s, 
women. We also brought uh, paintings by John Graham and also work on paper by Franz Klein. The gallery has a long history and has been one of the leading authorities in the New York School of Abstract Expressionism from this group, also Joseph Cornell. And this is the, uh, the Franz uh, Klein, Klein. on the end. We the also end. have a continuing program with, of introducing new artists, which now are considered contemporary modern masters like Wayne Thiebaud, and also introducing new and younger artists. So the breadth of our program continues, and we're into our almost 50th year. Your gallery is here in New York? Yes, we're on uh, 90th Street, just east of uh, Park Avenue in an old firehouse. We just caught up with a good friend of WVVH Hamptons TV, Mark Borgi, who has the uh, has a gallery in the Hamptons, but you're also part of this Armory show. Right, we have a gallery in Bridgehampton and in New York as well. We're showing at Armory Modern this week. I love the story of how your father started the right. Uh, gallery. Right. And just a little bit for our viewers and a little bit about why you're here at the Armory show. Uh, I think it's the best show in New York to exhibit in. Um, we're exhibiting here, we're doing a pop show. We're showing Warhol, Kusama, a lot of pop artists. And, uh, and speaking of the Hamptons, we're showing works by de Kooning that have never been seen before, coming from Elaine, uh, Bill's wife. So uh, it'd be a nice thing if you're in town, stop by. This show, uh, you should stop by and see it. Absolutely. For those who are uh, new to the Armory show, if you can... Uh Fill them in. <laughs> Fill them in as, as, a, as a local. You're a local like I am from, from the Hamptons who's part of this event. Uh, it's a world-class event. I mean, there's exhibitors that come from everywhere. It's, um, I think, the equivalent of what Art Basel Miami is for New York. It's 200 exhibitors. It's, it's like going to the Museum of Modern Art, Guggenheim, and the Met all in one shot. And you get to buy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mentioned a little bit, your family has been part of the art world for a number of years. Started with your 50. father, 50, and your, right. you and your brother, and I don't know if there are any other family members. Another brother, sister, yeah. <laughs> The inception of the uh, of the Borgi family into into the art world. Could you talk a little bit about that? Oh well, yeah. It actually kind of began right not far from where we're standing. Uh, my father came to this country in 1954, 55. Uh, Jump ship was called then. So he was illegal uh, Italian American. He was on his way to Newark, New Jersey, uh, to meet someone. He stopped in a little town, Lyndhurst, across the river at this little luncheonette and met my future mom. And uh, he used to work the ships back and forth. He was a merchant marine. And he would buy a painting for my mom. And every time someone would come over to the house, he'd say, that's really nice. I'd like to buy that. And he's like, I think I can make a business out of that. And now you're uh, dealing in de Koenigs. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> hey, it's, we're the Ameri so, it's the American dream. <laughs> it's the American dream. We're so proud of you and great to catch up with you here. And we'll see you guys in July. We will see you in, in July, July in the Hamptons. Thanks, thanks a lot, Mark. Come on by and visit. Now, Ernie, we're leaving 90, Pier 92 and going to Pier 94, which is a contemporary section of the show. Uh, this is the newest art. Uh, contemporary artists and the newest art by a more established artist. We're going to see everything. We're leaving painting and sculpture and photography behind to see all that and more. We'll see performance art, video art, sculpture, installations, uh, you name it, we're going to go find. Ernie, we're here in Pier 94 at the Michael Stevenson Gallery, who's here from Cape Town. And this is a great example of a performance piece, and visitors can come all day and get their nails painted at the gallery, and Yost is going to talk about this particular piece. All right, the artist is actually Mesha Gaba, who's from Benin, and the title of the work is Vernissage, which is a pun on the French 
word which can be used for a gallery opening or an event like uh, the one where we are today, but it can also mean painting of nails, literally adding a, a layer of varnish. Um, this entire shop that you see to my left is a, was a functioning nail parlor in Cotonou, the city of Cotonou in Benin. And the artist saw this functioning and really liked the sculpture, and uh, or it wasn't a sculpture at the time, the, the stand, and he offered a lady to, to just buy her whole shop. And ever since then, he's been traveling to exhibitions he's been doing around the world. Elsa here is, is painting people's nails. People can choose their own colors. Um, and, and it's a nice way for us to, to engage with visitors and, and show them the other aspects of the artist's work. Because he doesn't just make installations like the one that, that, that's sort of behind where the camera is right now. Um, that's, that's not the only kind of work he does. So to actually be able to show his performance work and other aspects of his work is, is very important to us. And what does it mean being part of this armory show for, uh, for this artist? Um, for the artist, it's a great way to be seen in the United States. Um, he's actually quite famous in Europe, I keep saying that today, but he's not that, that well known in, in the States. And for us as a gallery, it's amazing because nobody comes to Cape Town, um, so we sort of have to, come, have to come to them. And of course, New York is still a very important center um, in the art world. Ernie, we are at DCKT Contemporary, a gallery in the Lower East Side of New York, and we're here uh, with a solo exhibition of Cordy Ryman's work, and we have Dennis, a uh, gallery. Dennis Christie. Dennis Christie, who's <laughs> going to talk about Cordy's work, and we actually are very lucky because Cordy happens to be here today as well, so hopefully he will say a few words about his work as well. Well, Dennis, welcome to the Armory Art Show. You're Thank a you. New York gallery, yes. but you've made your way uptown to be part yes. of this event here at it's Pier 94. A little bit about your a little bit about your gallery and a little bit about this uh, this artist who uh, sure is now here at this gallery. Sure, uh, we uh, have been in business for about six or seven years and uh, moved two years ago to the Lower East Side. We're about a block and a half from the new museum, and so we've been showing down there and we love it down there. Um, we're very happy to be here, of course. Um, we've been working with Cordy for about a year and a half. His first solo show with us was one year ago, um, and we've just been uh, doing great with with him and his work. We absolutely love the work. What we have in the booth today represents uh, not only new works, but works going back to 2004. So it's a mix. Most things are new within the last six months, but there are a couple pieces that are a bit older, so it gives you a nice good overview. Of, the colors are, doing. Are, are bright. There's a vibrance to his. That's yeah. There definitely is, and that also goes to the work we selected to bring here. Um, he works in a wide variety of other colors and textures and things as well. It was really uh, just about bringing together, making a cohesive show, of solo show of the work. Cordy as an artist here. Um, it's very rare that we have an opportunity to actually sure. speak to the artist, and I know. Uh, TV is not something that you normally do, but no. your artwork is amazing. Thank you. Um, I guess what I brought here today is, like some of the stuff is more sort of architectural in nature and some of it is more self-contained in nature. And um, I guess I want it all to sort of be somewhat playful and fun, but also serious. Um, and I don't know, I just... Uh, no, but it's interesting that you mentioned that because your art speaks to the viewer. Right. The question is, what is it saying in in your mind? And I guess what what it what it says in our mind, we're seeing we're seeing form, but we're also seeing something that's bright and expressive. Well, hopefully, we'd have both things and more, maybe. Um, and uh, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, um, it's it's hard speaking yeah. of it. It's a lot easier making it, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. For me, it is. For me, a little bit about yourself. What's your background? I grew up in New York, and I went to the school of, school of visual arts. And uh, I guess I grew up in a sort of artistic family. And um, I never really thought that I'd end up doing exactly what I'm doing. But I'm, you know, I'm. I'm having a good time. Well, the Armory Art Show is the big show yeah. here in New York, yeah. and the selection process of artists like yourself is very, very significant. So congratulations for being part of the show. Thank you.